Okay, welcome back to our unit here on matter. Today's topic is elements, compounds, and mixtures. These are all types of matter. Okay, so lesson three of four, your objectives are as follows. You will understand the difference between an element and a compound today. You will learn how bonds form between atoms. Okay, you will learn the difference between a molecule and a compound. And you will understand the difference between heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. Okay, feel free to pause this anytime you feel necessary for your quick write. What do you think the difference is between an element and a compound? When you drink water, do you think it's water is made up of one type of element or a combination of elements? If you drink a sports drink, such as Gatorade, do you think it is mostly made up of one type of molecule or a mixture of molecules? All right, so elements. All elements can be found on the periodic table. Elements are substances made up of only one type of atom. They are the simplest forms of matter. Elements cannot be broken down into simpler substances, okay? So, which means they cannot be physically separated. For example, gold here, all right, contains only gold atoms. And no matter how hard I try to break gold down into something simpler, I cannot. Okay, it's still gold no matter how hot I get it, no matter how hard I try to break it up, okay, it's still always going to be gold. Same with carbon here. All right, or graphite. So carbon cannot be physically separated into a simpler substances, no matter how hot it gets or how many times I try to break it up or smash it, it's still going to be carbon atoms, no matter what. So, well, if you've ever inhaled helium to alter your voice, right? Well, you inhaled a pure substance. Okay, so a helium balloon is made up of only one type of atom here helium atoms. So, in other words, when you inhaled a helium balloon, you inhaled helium as a pure element, okay? One type of atom. All right, so for your notes, what is an element? Question on the left-hand side, answer here goes on the right-hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, bonds between atoms. A chemical bond is when two atoms share or transfer electrons. Consider the two hydrogen atoms below. Okay, we have two hydrogen atoms. When two hydrogen atoms get close enough, a bond might form. Okay, the result is a molecule of hydrogen gas. Okay, H2. Two atoms bonded together. H2. Okay, well, consider the bond that forms between a sodium atom here and a fluorine atom. So, some bonds form when electrons are actually transferred from one atom to the other, in the case of sodium and fluorine here. Okay, so when, when sodium bonds with fluorine to make sodium fluoride, the electron is completely removed from the sodium atom. Okay, so what is a chemical bond for your notes? Okay, question on the left hand side, answer goes on the right hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, compounds. Well, a compound is a pure substance made up of two or more elements that are bonded together. So, for example, good old table salt or sodium chloride, right? That is a compound. So, sodium, Na here, okay, and chlorine over here, chloride, okay, forms when the element sodium bonds with the element chlorine, forming a new chemical compound, sodium chloride, okay? So that is a compound. Or what about good old water, H2O? Okay, hydrogen, all right, bonds with oxygen here to make H2O. Okay, those are both compounds. So molecules versus compounds. There's a slight difference here. Most of the time they're the same thing, but there is a difference, all right? The other day we learned about the seven naturally occurring diatomic molecules. Well, those are molecules, but they're not compounds. So a molecule is two or more atoms bonded together, okay? 
A compound is a substance made up of two or more kinds of different elements that are bonded together. So what's the difference between a molecule and compound? Well, let's look at air here, for example. All right. Air is made up of oxygen and nitrogen molecules. Okay. Because they are made up of only one kind of element, notice it's a molecule. It's only made up of oxygen. This molecule of nitrogen, it's only made up of nitrogen. Okay. They're made up of only one kind of element. They can only be molecules and not compounds. Because look at our definition. A compound is a substance that's made up of two or more kinds of different elements. Okay. So keep these definitions in mind. A molecule is two or more atoms bonded together. A compound is a substance made up of two or more kinds of different elements that are bonded together. All right. For example, look at water here, H2O. Water is a compound because it contains two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. It meets the compound definition and it meets the molecule definition. Okay. So water is also a molecule because it is made up of two or more atoms bonded together. Okay. Because it meets both definitions, water is both a molecule and a compound. Therefore, all compounds are molecules, but not all molecules can be compounds. All right. So what is the difference between a molecule and a compound? A molecule here, make sure you know the difference. Question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. All right, chemical formulas. Okay, a chemical formula is used to represent a compound. Okay, or molecule. So a chemical formula is a group of symbols that shows the number of kinds of atoms in a compound. For example, sodium chloride. Okay, what does this tell you right here? Well, this chemical formula, by writing NaCl, it tells us that the compound contains one sodium atom, one sodium atom bonded to one chlorine atom. Okay, well, let's look at good old water again. Okay, H2O. The chemical formula for water tells us that the compound contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. All right. So the chemical formula tells us how many atoms are present in the compound or chemical. Okay. So what is the chemical formula? Question on the left hand side. Answer here on the right hand side. All right. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, so practice here. Determine how many atoms of each element are in each compound below. Okay, pause this while you work on this. When you're ready to see the answers, hit play. All right, so calcium chloride, the above compound, CaCl2, contains one calcium atom and two chlorine atoms, right? One calcium and two chlorine atoms. O3 or ozone, okay? The above compound, ozone, O3 contains, this 30 tells us that the molecule, okay, contains three oxygen atoms. All right, ammonium sulfide here, NH4, two with an S, tricky one. So listen, the above compound, ammonium sulfide, NH4, okay, two S here, contains this two right here tells us that we have two nitrogen atoms, okay, two times one gives us two nitrogen atoms, and eight hydrogen atoms, two times, two times four here, right, eight hydrogen atoms, and one sulfur atom, one times one here, all right, so almost done here, mixtures, okay, most matter you see around you is a mixture, okay, it's a mixture of different compounds and elements, so a mixture is two or more substances, elements, compounds, mixed together. So take salt water, for example. All right. If you were to mix okay, these two compounds, salt and water, you would create a mixture. All right. Well, the air you breathe is actually also a mixture of mostly oxygen gas okay, and nitrogen gas, those diatomic molecules. But it's also got elemental here, argon as an element. 
So for your notes, what is a mixture? Question on the left hand side. Okay, answer goes on the right hand side. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about here today is homogeneous versus heterogeneous mixtures. In a homogeneous mixture, the substances are evenly mixed. Once again, consider the air we breathe. Okay, can't live without that stuff. Okay, well, recall that air here is a mixture of mostly oxygen gas, okay, nitrogen gas, and argon. It's a mixture. Okay, these molecules, atoms, are evenly mixed. Okay, it is a homogeneous mixture because it is evenly mixed. Okay, every breath you take is going to be the same as the breath before it. That's how you know it's evenly mixed. Okay, another thing about homogeneous mixtures. Okay, the molecules in homogeneous mixtures, and okay, are the molecules and atoms, I should say, are far too small and therefore cannot be individually selected and picked out with your hand, right? So no matter how hard you try, you can't pick out the atoms or molecules in air because it's mixed evenly, all right? And every breath you take is going to be the same as the one before it because the molecules and atoms are evenly mixed. Notice, okay? Another type of homogeneous mixture is salt water, okay? Well, notice the salt and water molecules throughout the mixture are evenly mixed, all right? If you were to drink, okay, the homogeneous mixture of salt water, every sip would most likely taste the same as the previous sip before it, okay? Because they're evenly mixed. Notice the molecules here in atoms are evenly mixed together. So just like in the last mixture though, the atoms and molecules are far too small to be seen and therefore cannot be picked out with your hand. All right. So like I said, in other words, you can't individually, no matter how hard you try, pick out the salt atoms or molecules with your hand. Right. So that is a homogeneous mixture. It's evenly mixed. All right. But heterogeneous mixtures are different. A heterogeneous mixture is when one or more of the substances are not evenly mixed. Oftentimes in a heterogeneous mixture, the objects are large enough okay, to be seen and therefore can be picked out with your hand. All right. So look at sand and water here. Okay. It's a mixture. Consider a heterogeneous mixture of sand and water. Notice the molecules throughout the mixture are not evenly mixed. Down here we have sand, okay? Up here we have water. So they're not mixed evenly. And the sand particles in the mixture are large enough to be seen and I can, I can individually select them and pick them out by hand, as you just saw, all right? So one more heterogeneous mixture and we're done, okay? Consider the heterogeneous mixture of oil and water, okay? As you know, they don't mix. So, Notice the molecules throughout the mixture are not evenly mixed. Okay, that is the oil molecules are not mixing with the water molecules. And we'll learn why that is later. Okay, but for now, notice that they just aren't mixing. If you were to drink this mixture, each sip would most likely taste different than the previous sip before it because it's not mixed evenly. Okay, so that is a heterogeneous mixture. They are not mixed evenly. Okay, last one for your notes. Question goes on the left-hand side. And as always, the table or answer here will go on the right-hand side of your notes. Go ahead and pause this, okay, while you write. I'm going to move on to the summary here. Okay, you can always do your own. One thing I think I highly recommend is drawing this flow chart right here. It's a great way to summarize a lot of stuff that we learned today. And it puts it in a nice organized fashion here. Okay, and if you can, do these bullets, okay, on the left-hand side, okay? Go ahead and pause this while you do your summary, and we'll see you next time.